You know them aimbots, right? Programs that make your character aim at the enemy at the press of a button. Yeah, today I will step by step teach you how to make one yourself. Yes, from literally nothing to a fully working external aimbot. Yes, this aimbot will work on other computers as well, so if you want to share it with your friends, it will all be good. Yes, everything in this tutorial is free and nothing is keeping you from becoming an elite script kitty degenerate. So, how does our aimbot look in the end? Let's take a look. It will be an exe that we start and then it shows a custom message. At this point, we are ready to go inside the game. When inside the game, we simply press our desired hotkey and our player will aim directly at the enemy, even through walls. Now that we have made up our mind about making this aimbot, let's go through the needed tools for this video. For coding language, it will be C-sharp with the .NET framework. To locate our memory addresses, we use Sheet Engine. For the game, it will be Counter-Strike Source. It's one of the best games out there to start with, since it doesn't update that often, and memory structures are well documented. If you want to do this for CSGO, then everything will be the same, but different modules and addresses. For the final step, like the video and write a comment. This helps me reach more people. Before it's too late, I want to put out a disclaimer. I am not responsible for any damage you may cause. This video especially shows you how to run the game in a mode which allows third party programs. Ruining the game for others is not the purpose of this video. This tutorial will be divided into two parts. One finding all of the needed addresses and offsets. The second part coding the whole aimbot. You are free to skip the first part since it's not necessary, but I deeply recommend watching it anyways. Okay, at the desktop. So, before we start, console source, right click on it and properties, and we add this insecure command. This will have the game running or will disable VAC, which is the anti sheet, and we can't join VAC secured servers. However, we cannot get banned either, so it's a win win. When you have added dash insecure, close that down and start. Now, you may notice that we have our sticky notes there. It's in Windows 10, so everyone should have it. And we use this sticky note to write down the entity list, the view angles, the local player, everything we need. So we just entity list and something like that. Then copy paste it here. Now we to find out that VAC is really disabled, you can just join a VAC secure server and this message message will show. So we know that we're or we have disabled VAC, now we can create a server. So, uh, for the server, just choose DUS2 and include CPU player bots. So, we'll have four bots, so we have teammates and enemies. Now, when you have selected all of the correct things, let's start it. Okay, so, Inside the game, we'll have to make the bots stop or stay in the same position because otherwise they will just move around, they will shoot at us. It will be really annoying. So open the console, type sv sheets one and then bot stop one. This will make the bots stay in place like this. So now it's much easier to do stuff in the background, so searching for values and so on. Now that we have the, all of this done, let's find some memory addresses. Okay, so first off, we need to know what we are trying to find. So for an aimbot, you need the entity list, which we wrote earlier. We need the local player. Luckily, these two will be found in the same pointer scan. Uh, it will be the same method as in the ESP tutorial, so 
it will be similar stuff. Now we have the entity list, we have the local player, we also need the view angles for our character, so the yarn pitch, so we can set our angles. And do we need something more? Yeah, we need some offsets. So we need a HP, we need XYZ coordinates, we need the dormant offset, and that should be it, right? Maybe. We'll figure it out on the way. So you have the game open. We open Sheet Enu. Yeah, I don't know. We attach it to Counter-Strike. Now, to find the entity list and the local player, we just search for our health and pointer scan. So, value 100. Now, in game we type, hurt me. The health will go down to 90. We search 90. Now we just repeat, and it's minus 10, so. Now we have some addresses. I don't know if they will decrease, but okay. F nine addresses. Let's browse the, the memory regions of all of them. So nothing happens here. Why we search for values that change is because the X, Y, Z coordinates are in the local player so if we have found the right address stuff should change with the movement of the character so nothing here looks like it changes with the movement let's check the next one here stuff changes a lot which gives us a good chance of finding it stuff changes here Yeah, stuff changes. So, if you might be unsure, just pick them too. This one doesn't change. I will make a video on finding the entity list, a separate video, which has pictures and so on. So, if you want a more visual tutorial, then I'll make sure to upload that. It should have been uploaded before this video, but I got into some problem with ad revenue. I don't know why, but I sent it in for manual uh, detection or whatever, and they passed the green light on it. Oh, uh, enough about that. When we have a couple of addresses which look good, we will point the scan for them. So, po point the scan for this address. Now we pick the max level, it will be 1. We name it something like ant for entity list. And we basically just go through all of these. So this is not the correct one. We should have more pointers which has the same offset. Oh, that's a pointer scan for this one. We can just overwrite the last one, since it's not the correct one. Message bars. Nothing. Let's point scan for this one. server.dll and engine.dll it will not be these ones sadly it will be the client.dll so if you're using a different game then uh, it will look si or uh, it will look different you will use uh, different modules and so on but the structure is the same kind of so you can apply this to other games as well i've used it on uh, call of duty world at war assault cube and so on but not this finding the entity list way then i just 
search for a zombie's health. Now, we have five pointers, yeah, five pointers, and they have the same offset, so 94. This means there's probably an entity list here which has, or a player in the entity list, us, which has the health offset 94. We can use this when writing our program and use the same offsets. So we pick one, we pick the first one that has 94, we don't use 8C. We take this one, we remove the pointer, and now we browse this memory region. Then we click on tools, dissect, slash data structures. Now we look for other players on or for each 10 bytes. So if there was a player, then this would be a pointer, like this one. So this is not what we're looking for. This could be the local player. We check uh, 94 and that's our health. So we can pick this one as our local player. We just take this, copy this and save it for later. So we have our, our local player. Now we check for our entity list. So we pick the next one, we remove the pointer, we browse the memory region, everything like before. Now take a look at the 10 bytes, nothing, something at 20 bytes, but oh, it is something here. So something at 20 bytes, nothing at 30 bytes, not really what we're looking at, since we have uh, we have four bots, so there should be bots. Or could this be? Maybe, th yeah. So, these places are just empty in the entity list, so this could very much be the entity list since it follows the rules of being or having players 10 bytes apart. So we'll name it, claim this entity list. We'll check these other ones because usually you're the first player in the entity list and they add on without having spaces in between. So we we'll browse the next one. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Pick the next one. Uh, dissect. Yeah. So here we have something, 10 bytes. We check, it's just leading to a bunch of pointers, so not the correct one. So we actually found the entity list, which looks like this. So nothing at 10, but in 20, so 10 bytes down. You check for 30, nothing here. 10 bytes, bytes down again, it's 40 bytes. Offset 94, 100. Let's see if we can, or that could be a bit hard since we can't really hurt our teammates. But this is the entity list. So you have players 10 bytes apart. Here could be a player, here could be a player, and so on. This should be us, the first one in the list. And we take a look at 94. We type hurt me, and it's 90. So this is the entity list. Entity list, there we go. They also look similar in memory, so. That should give it away as well. All right, so we have the entity list, we have the local player. Now we need view angles, we need HP. We actually, we already know the HP offset. It was 94 from our pointer scan. Now we need the X, Y, and Z coordinates. To do that, we just pick our local player we browse this memory region, dissect data structures, 
and now we look for coordinates which also are in the game. So in source games you can use the command get position. So here we can search or get uh, our coordinates. The z coordinate will be a bit higher since this command set po position. If we use that it teleports us a bit in the sky. So we'll ignore this last c coordinate a bit and we'll look for uh, close that one down for the x and y coordinate so let's look here minus 623 and minus 698 the coordinates will be four bytes apart so it's just three floats in a row uh, nothing yet I hope <laughs> okay so I can see some minus 620 that says free and not probably is th this one anyways boop here we have mi minus 622 here we have minus 700 here we have 138 so yeah that we changed the position when we land on ground that's why it's different here so this is probably probably the x y and z coordinates which starts at 260 and a ends at 268 so we could just read 12 bytes so one float two float three float which is 12 bytes and then bit convert them into three separate floats so we'll have one single offset and not one for or one offset for x one offset for y and one offset for z we'll have one offset instead makes it easier uh, now for the dormant offset it can be a bit tricky because it's a uh, it's a variable which changes depending on if you're or if you should be able to see them in in game or something like that i'm no expert but they add this new thing which doesn't let you see active coordinates if the player is too far apart or uh, behind a certain an amount of walls I suppose so to do this we'll create a new game and we'll have one player and now let's clear that this be sheets all over again uh, we'll kill the bot because he probably moved so on dust 2 it's pretty easy to find the dormant offset because you can just walk or go to those two doors and out those two doors the dormant offset will change so it's that far apart which the games or the game tell us that the entity is dormant or not but we can make it even easier by using r underscore draw other models too so we have this wallack kind of i don't know but the dormant offset follows this one too so here it should be something here it should be zero or whatever now we can just go back to our structure or the start of this is the local player <laughs> we can't use the local player to find the dormant offset we need to use the entity list because we need to find out if that entity is dormant i al almost messed that up real bad but we just dissect the entity instead so here is 10 bytes down this is us this is the entity we look at the entity and now 
we check if there is some values that changes like a, like an integer, not a float. So at 80 bytes, we have something that changes. It seems. Oh, it doesn't. No, it, it doesn't change all the time, so we can't use that. Let's just see what it what it is. Four bytes. Well, it's not reliable enough, so. Uh, or maybe it, it is. I don't know. We need, or I like something clearer. So, not dormant, dormant, not dormant, dormant. Nothing here. Take a look at the next. So, at 17C, I see something that changes. Also at 184. But at 17C, it's either 0 when it's dormant, or it's 65536 when he's not dormant. So I think we have found our dormant offset. So dormant offset. And by the way, if you're doing this on a non source game, you will not need this dormant offset. I don't think there is any other game that uses this dormant thing. You can just uh, get all of the entities without this. But we have a dormant offset, which is zero when we see him, when visible, six, whatever, uh, six, five, five, three, six, when not. Now we have the HP, we have the X, Y, and Z, we have the dopement, we have the entity list, we have the local pair, and now I just remembered we need the team offset. <laughs> so we'll have the team. And to get our team, we just write CL not draw P dump one. So we'll get the local local player dump uh, uh, can I have something to look at and now we just need to find our team team num integer so it's a 2 and now we'll just find this 2 in our local player so local player a lot of switching between the local player and the entity. That's my bad. It's not really scripted, this video. Uh, now we just look through this. And since uh, we know the team integer, we can just check the next entity if it has the two. So here at 9C, it's a two. But if we look at the entity, and at 90 it's a 2 as well. We know that that will not be the team offset because the team offset should be the same as your teammates and not the enemies. So we have some potential team offsets. We have 9C. Let's just write them down here because we don't know yet. So we have 9C. We have 178. We have I don't think it should be this far apart, so we'll probably be fine with these two offsets. So this is kind of far away from the base of our entity. Okay, so we have two offsets to work with. We have nine C and one hundred and seventy eight. Let's take a look. I could probably just switch between uh, the entity list and our 
the local player pretty easily by just going here. Nah, who cares? Okay, now we we'll take a look at our entity. Then why it's down. We take a look at 9C and it's a free. So this is probably a valid team offset. Because we can check that offset if it's the same as our, if it's not the same, it's an enemy. He says that here is us again. Take a look at 9C2. I'll take a good guess. Uh, we can check the 178 when I think about it. So here it says 2, which is the same as our. So it's not 178, it's 9C because 9C changed and 178 didn't change. So we have our team offset now as well. Wow, I wonder how long this video is. I hope it doesn't <laughs> go on for longer than the ESP video. I did not get the team offset in the ESP video and I don't think I got the dormant offset either. But we have and when I'm talking about that, I realize that we don't have the view angles, but that's really easy, so ah, who cares. Now, when we have the P dump, let's go to this darker room and check for view angles. Oh, it doesn't contain view angles. Ah, boring. Okay, so let's remove that. Now the view angles they work like this so when you aim directly up the y-axis at the yaw maybe or the pitch it's one of them <laughs> but it will be minus 80, 89 so not 90 degrees but minus 89 and plus 89 when you look straight down and when we have the y axis we can just decrease that address by four bytes or or add i don't remember we'll we'll find out later but we can just add or decrease four bytes to get the next address which will be the x axis so we just need to find one we search for eight minus 89 in the R and it will be a float. So minus 89. We aim straight down and now we search 89. This will also be a static value. So it will be a green value. Oh, a lot of addresses. That's a bit annoying. And we only have free engine.dll memory addresses. So it will not be one of these client ones, thankfully. <laughs> Let's just change these well and see if we'll get something. So nothing there. Oh it appears we have found our y axis. Okay, so Let's delete that one. What well, it was this one, right? No, it wasn't. It was this one. Yeah. Remove this one. And we have our y axis. Now, because our x axis is also nearby, we can just remove four bytes. I believe x is before y. I don't know really. None. It doesn't look. Let's freeze it. You shouldn't be able to move around on the x axis if it's the correct one. So it's not minus. Let's do plus four bytes. Freeze it again. And you can't really move left or right. So we have also found our x axis, but it's the next one. So we'll just copy this and paste it here. Now we have everything. That's amazing. Also remember this is engine.dll so the rest 
the entity list local player that's client.dll so client.dll and gen dot dll and these are just offsets so we don't need to specify which module they are in since you just add them to these addresses and so okay now we have a fully list let's code this thing and i will take a break i think before starting the coders but with the power of, of editing Okay, so coding this magnificent aimbot. We have our sticky notes of entity list, local player, view angles, and offsets. Now we just need to program our application. It will be a console app.NET framework. It will work for Windows Forms, uh, that other one as well. I don't remember the name, but it's for more design, whatever. We start here, and before we do anything else, we'll add a class. So we'll use this class as a data type. We'll call this entity, like that. Instead of internal, it will be public, so we can access it easily. Now, in this entity class, we'll have a few variables. So, we'll have integers, such as health, we'll have dormant, we'll have these, these ones. Actually, we don't really need dormant. We don't really need team either. <laughs> we'll have one integer health the health integer we don't need it op or the team or the offset or the dormant offset because there's no reason for storing them if if the player is not dormant we will not use them in our list so if we have it will be useless information. Enough of that. Here we have our entity. It will have a health which we will store. Oh, never mind. We actually will use one more integer, which is the team, because we will store our own team. But it will be in this entity class. Now, the reason why we store only our team is because we need to check our team and then we can check it with the current entity in the current loop and we can tell if it's an enemy or not. Now, at the start of the program, we will declare some variables. So everything that we wrote here, we will paste here, but in integers and so on. So this will be the client which is int entity list which is this we have our local which is this one and now we have the engine which our view angles are const in view angles uh, there we go after that we just have offsets so offsets const integer hp equals to 94 the 0x so the 0x just tells our program that it's an hexadecimal const in no const flow no 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 
what am I talking about? It's always an integer. But uh, const integer x y z equals to two hundred sixty. Const int dormant equals to seventeen c. Team equals to nine c. There we go. Let's just create a region. There we go. Now we can just close it down. So when we have all that, we can move on to the aimbot. So in the main method, we will get the process, the HL2 process, the Counter-Strike process. We will get the module base from the client.dll because we use uh, the client module and we use the engine module. So it's not the main module, would be which would be .exe, it's the client.dll and engine.dll. So to get all this stuff, including the memory reading and so on, we will use my own memory reading and writing tool, sweat32.dll. Link for it will be in the description. I will also uh, leave a tutorial on how to build that memory class. So it shouldn't be a problem. If you're having problems with that, then uh, I would suggest learning the basics of C sharp instead of watching this aimbot tutorial. But however, let's move on. Now that we have the SWED32, you can use a different memory read and write tool. This is just my own, so I prefer to use it. Using SWED32, now in the main method, we'll write SWED, SWED equals new, SWED use it as an object and we'll create a new entity this will be us it will be the local player so here we will store our position uh, and our team nothing else we'll create a list after that which are the entity and in or this list will be called entity list now I see that we use the same name. That will not do good. We have this list which contains entities, which equals a new list. Here we will store each entity. We will store their coordinates. We'll store their uh, We don't really need to store their HP, I, I guess you can do it. But we will store the coordinates and we'll store the magnitude. So we can tell which one is uh, closest to us and then we will aim at it. So we have this list, which will be the main list. Okay, so to get the process, we will use sweat.getProcess. This just uh, loops through the, the process list and takes the first process which or with this process name. Uh, and also updated or updates a process variable inside this memory class, which we need to update before we can use get module base. So our client module will equal get module base and it will be client.dll if this is confusing then I recommend watching the uh, finding memory addresses and so on bit because otherwise this will just be a lot of stuff that 
you don't know why I'm doing it for. Okay, so we have the client, we have the engine. These are uh, base addresses, which are pointers. We'll use them when we read. All right, now uh, we are ready to write our methods for getting the local player or updating the local player. We're ready for updating the entity list and we're ready for everything. So let's start it. First off, we'll create a method which will be called update local. This method will update the local player's information. All right, we'll create a buffer for our pointer, which will be thread.read pointer. And we use the client and we use the local player. And there we go. This will return the uh, or we'll read the pointer and it will return the address of our local player. Now we just need to uh, declare our team and position. So our team, or our team, our team num equals thread.read bytes now instead of read pointer. And it, we will use the buffer and now our team offset. So this offset, which is 9c, will read four bytes because I think the team number is an integer. Maybe not, but we can read four bytes and it tells us the correct values. Uh, for the position, create a new variable. We use the buffer, we use the XYZ offset, and now instead of reading 4 bytes, we read 12 bytes. So that's where we can convert these 12 bytes into 3 floats, because a float va value is 4 bytes, so 12 bytes is 3 times 4. Uh, now we just do play.x equals to bit converter to single to a float and we use the position and we start at zero because the x value or the x of the position starts at zero and goes to four then it will be the y and at eight bytes it will be the z. So now we can just copy and paste now this is the Y, and now we have the Z. And there we go. So this is just reading three by or three float values in a row and converting them into separate var variables. Uh, and the last thing will be the team, which will be bits converter to int this time. And we pass in the team num start at zero. All right, this will update the local position. So this player, or we will use this in our main loop. We can write that loop now. So while true. Here, ah, oh, never mind. We'll actually use some. Uh, uh, hotkeys, so we'll not we'll move on to that later. Okay, now when we have updated the local position, let's update the entities. All right, before we pass in more entities in our entity list, we'll have to clear it first. So we have fresh new entities. To loop through each entity, we'll create a for loop. So int i equals to zero. 
And when i is less than, now I just pick 32. A uh, normal Counter-Strike game, it's 10 players, so 32 should be good if you want to use it in a larger uh, player level, just change this to 64 or something. But 32 is good. We'll increment i by 1 each loop. Now, for each entity, we'll have a... Uh, will get the entity pointer. So we'll have a buffer which equals to so to read pointer. Now we use the client and we use the entity base plus i times 10 bytes because they are 10 bytes apart like I showed you guys. So, we just go through each entity, or f uh, through 32 entities, we read this pointer with using the i and so on. So, not really difficult stuff here. <laughs> we'll get um, entity health, which will be bit converter to int. So, I dot read bytes, we'll use the buffer and we use the HP offset health offset, we'll read 4 bytes and to convert it we start from 0 in the bit converter. Now if you're if you don't like using read bytes then you can just change the sved 32 bit uh, memory class to have your own methods so read int, read float, read whatever you want I just prefer read bytes. Uh, we'll have a dormant offset no a dormant variable, my bad. Bits converter and again and again so sweat yeah 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 buffer and yeah, this is really nice it almost gets everything right so dormant because this is the offset dormant read four bytes again we start from zero all right oh one more so the team team num bits converter to in yeah, yeah. no what is that i don't know swear so dot read bytes buffer team and four no 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 yeah there we go so we get the team number now we can check all of these if for for example the enemy is dead the enemy is not dormant we or the enemy is a teammate or that wouldn't make sense then it would be enemy but if this entity is not what we're looking for, we can just not include it in this list we're making in this entity list. Uh, this one, all right. So, if health this health is greater than no, it's less than one, so zero, he's dead. Oh, I, I think we need, we'll use two, so it will not see the enemy if it's on one, but who cares. For some reason, they get the value one when you kill entities. So we'll use two here, or when it's less than two. Now, if it's not equal to zero, because it was some, or this value, when we didn't see it, we can use does not equal zero, and we can use team num equals player dot team. Right, so we check that it's not a teammate. We check that it 
is storm or that it's not dormant we check that it's uh, alive all right oh never mind we don't use brackets here we just do continue to go to the next i in the loop so when you use continue it will just increment i by one and do the next loop so this is just to filter out the bad entities which we don't want all right now for the entity that we do want we'll get the position which equals to like before so we use the buffer we we use the xyz we use 12 bytes because it's free floats and now we will create a new entity with the name ant we'll use sweat up read but no what is this I'm just kidding it's a new entity all right so x equals to to single position we start at zero and now it's it's just copy paste again Uh, we don't really need to get the HP because if they're dead or if we don't want them then there's no <laughs> need to store that information all right now that we have a valid entity that we want to aim to we calculate the magnitude of this entity and we also store that because we want to get the closest uh, entity so we'll actually need one more meth or we need two more methods but this one is real quick so we'll have a new method float called magnitude uh, use one entity because we already have our public player so we can just use that when calculating the magnitude between those two 3d points all right for this we'll return a float and we use math.square root math.pow and now we use the entities dot x minus player dot x to the power of two why is that a oh my bad there we go so this is just uh, maybe eighth eighth grade math nothing complicated if I remember correctly of course uh, we use the player y we add I forgot the plus the z All right. Now, uh, you could think of this like uh, having a cube and taking or drawing a line through the cube from one corner to the or the bottom corner to the top corner on the different side. So we just to take two triangles. Uh, or we create a new triangle with the hypotenuse of two sides of this cube. Uh, I've done something wrong here. It's probably something like this. No, it's not. <laughs> Should be two. Ah, uh, what have I done wrong now? Uh, oh, I'm lazy. And I don't have good eyesight, so let me just copy paste that. I'm really sorry. I don't have time to look through each one of them. But we return the magnitude. Now we can use this. So, ent, our entity, dot magnitude, 
will equal cold magnitude and and we have done that everything is good we can add him to the entity list perfect so we get all of the entities we update them to this entity list now we just need one more method which will be the aim method the aimbot sounds scary but it's easy when you get to know it uh, now with an aimbot uh, I would do a math video on this explaining everything or calculating the view angles and so on but you guys don't watch that uh, I think the other videos get many times or multiple times the views so I won't actually explain this with drawings and so on I'll just tell you guys in words but we use delta x which is um, the entity x minus the player x we use the float or the delta y and with this we can calculate the x view angle so it will be or we will cast it as a float because math.atan2 uses not square root a ten two it's a double so we'll have to cast it as a float and delta y delta x no 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 let's calm down oh we're fine so far all right we'll take that times 180 divided by math dot pi so we need you times 180 divided by math dot pi it's because uh, you convert it to degrees, right? Yeah, 8 and 2 is uh, radians, so we'll have to convert it to degrees and we use uh, a triangle with delta x and delta y we take the hypotenuse... No. wait, hold on <laughs> let me think about this before I'm telling you the wrong stuff uh, we get it. Yeah, no, 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 no. We don't need no hypotenuse or hypotenuse. However, you you don't need that when using a ten because you just need the height and the base of this triangle. So we get the triangle using uh, the delta x and delta y. We calculate the uh, the angle from our position to that other point with using a tan and we convert it to degrees so we can just write this float so for the y axis we'll have to use uh, the delta c so delta c equals entity dot c minus player dot c for this angle, we'll have to get the distance. So map dot square root uh, map dot pow two plus map dot pow delta y. So this is, or the distance is it's just um, the hypotenuse of these two variables we used earlier that will be the distance so we draw a new line in this 3d space the distance and we use that as the base and we use uh, the delta z for the height smart stuff right have a new float, float y, which is the y axis, 
Because this has a float, my bad, and we'll have this minus sign before it, because it's minus when we look up and uh, positive when we look down. So we'll just have to convert it. Math dot a ten again. So we we'll use here we use the delta z and we use the distance. Now, as before, we do times 180 and divided by math.py. And for the last crucial part in this aim method, we'll write to the game the new angles to aim at them. We'll use the engine module. We'll use the uh, this is the x angle, which we knew was the view angles plus 4 bytes. So, we could just get a calculator and go on the programmer section. Go to hex, copy this. Ah. Uh, uh, let's just create a new variable for it so it's easier to understand. We take this plus four bytes and now we have the new address. So this is the x angle. Constant view x. There you go. I try to make it as less confusing as possible. Here we have the view x. Here we have the view y. Now let, let's just write to them. So view x and we write this x. So bit converter dot get bytes and we'll pass in x. View y and why and now we have completed our aim method now we just need to add our hotkey and we're ready to go in our main loop so uh, for hotkeys we'll use get async key state and if you're worrying about the custom message uh, I will get that after <laughs> We have completed the input, so don't worry about it. Uh, for get async key state, we'll move up to under the program again. We'll write dll import because C sharp doesn't contain this function. It will be located in the user 32 module or dll. When you have an error like this, you can just use or hover over it show potential fixes and just click on the solution most of the times it works so uh, static extern short get async key state keys and now we don't have this keys because we need win we need to use uh, using system.windows.forms so now we can just do keys dot uh, x button to for example to aim on our uh, mouse button alright so now that we have hotkeys as well let's write or complete this aim bot uh, while true so it always runs if we get the key state keys dot now you can use whatever key you want you can use the D button you can use the R button I I don't care <laughs> do as you wish I will use the X button too this is mouse 5 so it's easier to just hold down uh, if we press the button we update the local position we update the entities 
now we order the entity list by the magnitude so uh, o dot magnitude and convert it to a list to a list all right so we get the closest one and then if there are any entities dot count is greater than zero let's let's aim at that entity to the list which will be the first one so this is it with the exception of uh, having a thread dot sleep here which we need to use using system dot all right now we can just do thread dot sleep let's sleep for uh, not 19 one millisecond otherwise this will just run constantly you can do that I wouldn't recommend it though okay let's go into game I don't want to play this map let's create a new map with dust 2 we'll create one or we'll have one ball alright so start our program Looks like something's happening. It took a while, it might be a my Visual Studio is messing up for some reason. But when I hold my aim key, you can see that it aims at the enemy. So let's stop him for a second. He's way out of line. And when I hold my aim key down, I aim at the player. So you will notice that, uh, for example, uh, the point which we're aiming at is a bit uh, strange. It's over the head, or not in every angle, but in some angles we aim and it will be out of range. Now. An easy fix, it would just uh, do minus uh, 10 maybe in the Z axis to have him aim at the stomach or a place like that. Or you could find the head position of this character and you can use the uh, view origin, I believe. I hope that someone can correct me in the comments, but we need to use different uh, positions positions when we calculate at the enemy, which is easy to just fix, just change the memory addresses we read to, and then you would aim uh, directly at the head. So I did it in Team Fortress 2. The um, the bone matrix is. Uh, well, people have just documented it online so it wasn't really hard to find just read to that read the head position and it will aim at the head but we have a function in aimbot it's a really good project to start with maybe I don't know you guys had to tell me if it was easy or not I don't know if you're having problems then please watch the video before uh, you know contacting people in the discord asking for help because it's a long video every error shouldn't rely on other people you should look for the error yourself debug actually 
take a look at what goes wrong. So checking that you get the correct uh, module base address, that you're getting the correct uh, process. Just check errors yourself. And if there are any problems that you can't uh, really tell why they're happening or need more help, then yes, go to the Discord and ask for help in the C Sharp section. We have some good people helping out. But you have to do work yourself. They will not complete the work for you. Okay. I will take a quick break and then I will show you guys how to create that custom message which uh, starts at the well that I showed you in the start. So for this custom looking uh, text that I showed you. I just went to this website text to ACI whatever converter or art generator now you type something I'll just type sweat now we copy this and in our aimbot we just write console dot write line and now use this at before enter a lot of times and paste so there you go custom message for your aimbot now it looks cool if you want to change the color just comes up foreground color green Woo! insane Alright, see you guys in the next video.